Mark chapter number 6. For sake of time. Verse number 37. He, being Jesus, answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He said unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they said five and two fishes. And he commanded them to uh, make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked unto heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the, his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And when they did eat, they were all filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of fishes. Now, we're very familiar with this story. You know, verse number 32, Jesus tells his disciples that, hey, we're going into the desert to rest. All right, you want biblical precedent for taking a vacation? There you go. All right, but notice I didn't do it every other week, but that's a whole different message. Okay, but Jesus and his disciples needed a time away. Well, the multitudes followed him. They went across by boat. I don't know how you can cut by boat, go straight there. It said that the multitude walked around the body of water that they went, and they met them on the other side. They were some determined people. They outran a boat going by water. But when they got to the other side, Jesus saw them all. Other passages that he had compassion on them. He taught them. All right, great message. Okay, but after the message, because Jesus, being as gracious and as merciful as he was, he didn't just give them a thought for the day. He sat down and he preached to them for a while. And the day drew to an end, and the disciples had enough common sense, unlike Yehu, they realized, hey, we don't have enough food to feed these guys. And it's so late in the day, they better be going now if they want to get back to town and have enough time to buy stuff for shops closed. So they told Jesus, send them away, that they may go into towns and eat. And he said, well, you give them to eat. That blew their minds, because they knew that they didn't have nothing for them to go eat. Okay, but, verse number 37, he says, give ye them to eat. They said, 200 penny worth of bread wouldn't have been enough to feed them. The other passages said that if 200 penny worth of bread wouldn't have been enough for everybody to have some, let alone be filled. Uh, well, verse number 30, he said to them, How many loaves have ye? And we know the story of the lad that had his lunch. Five barley loaves, two fishes. But notice, Jesus didn't ask how many fish they had. He said, How many loaves have ye? Go and read every example of this story. He asked them, How much bread you got? He doesn't mention anything about the fish. Be it. Verse number 37, he says, or 38, he says, go and see. And when they knew, right, thousands of people there, the disciples, they said, all right, you go that way, I go this way, we're going to divvy up. Y'all go find out how much bread there is. Okay, I could see him going. Hey, y'all got any food? Y'all walked out into the desert and you didn't bring any bread with you? He's like, all right, that person's dumb. That, that one's a hard rock. You say, what? That person just wasn't thinking. Next person. You got any bread? No, I don't have anything. What about you? Well, I've got some vegan soy. We don't want that. Get out of here. Right? We've got some whole foods. No, nope, we want bread. We want gluten and everything that comes with it. But, I can see, I didn't go and they made them sit down by companies. They were all organized. You can see 12 disciples going out. I don't know which one found out where the lad was. Maybe it's John, maybe it's Peter, Andrew, I don't know. But I can see him coming back saying, hey, how much you get? Nothing. What about you? None. Zero. All the way down the line. And the disciple, that when they went and they found out, found the lad. They said, hey, that boy's got five barley loaves. But he's also got two fish. I don't know, but Josh, my imagination, I could see Peter. Jesus didn't ask about fish, he asked about bread. He said, yeah, but he still got it. 
All right, fine. We'll tell me, Lord, you want to know how much bread there was? There's five loaves of bread, and there's two fishes. But there's five loaves of bread. Jesus said, all right, hand it over. And notice, I don't know, this is as as that. In my mind, I'd always just imagined that Jesus blessed it, break it. He'd give the disciples, the disciples go out and then come back. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he blessed it, break it, gave it to the disciples, and then they went out through the whole crowd. He touched it once. He said, bless it, break the bread. Then he blessed the fish. What happened? He sat on the boat. I mean, the Bible says they put him in a boat off the shore so that everybody could hear him, see him teaching. What happened? They came out to the boat. He blessed it. He gave it back to them. They went back to the land. And they just started handing it out to everybody, and it just kept going. Well, what are you saying? So I did a little bit of math. Okay, Jesus knew how much bread was out there that day. He knew what the lad's mama packed him for lunch that day. He knew everything that was in the basket. I don't know. There may have been other people that day that had bread, but didn't have enough faith to give it to Jesus. I don't know. We've heard our, that message our pastor preaches on, Lord, here's my basket. Right? But Jesus knew how much bread was out there. He asked to see how much the disciples could find. Hey, how much bread y'all got? They come back, well, we got five loaves. And really, it's not even the high-quality bread. Notice it's that barley loaves. Not in this, but you can go read Luke, John, Matthew. It's barley. What wasn't wheat. What wasn't flour. What wasn't the pure, what wasn't the real nice stuff. All right, this is barley loaf. Right, that was poor man's bread back in Bible days. They said, all we got is five barley loaves. That's why you can make five barley loaves out of, because it was that much cheaper than wheat. You can get the good stuff, but it costs you more. Or you could have five barley loaves instead of one wheat loaf. Right, well, come back. We got five barley. It's not much, Lord. We got the poor man's bread, and we only got five of them. And then whichever disciple went and talked to the lad said, "Oh yeah, Lord, and two fishes." Didn't even know how to speak English, right? They didn't say two fish. They said fish is. Right. I always thought that the plural of fish was fish. But the disciples said, no, we got two fishes. Well, what do you say? Well, at the end of it all, we know that they took up 12 baskets full. Which begs, I still haven't figured out where they got the baskets from. Yeah, could be. I don't know. I mean, our pastor preached that message not too long ago. The real miracle here is that when he made them sit down, they sat down in green grass in the middle of the desert. Well, where'd that grass come from? Jesus, I don't know. But where'd the baskets come from? Jesus. Maybe all that grass that he may grow, they started weaving in the baskets, and next thing you know, they got 12 baskets to put all the leftover food in. I don't know. But somehow they got 12 baskets. It didn't say 12 lunchbox. No, 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 baskets. Back in the day, baskets were for you to carry a whole bunch of stuff from here to there, and a lot of times they'd carry it on their head. Right, big old baskets full of food went home with the lad. That was five loaves and two fishes equaled 12 baskets. Without the two fish, did a little bit of math, you'd be about 2.4 baskets short of what they ended up with. Only been 10 baskets and not even full. But look with me down in verse number 42, and they did all eat and were filled didn't say that they ate and were satisfied. No, they ate until, like most of y'all do on Thanksgiving, where they ate until the thought of food made them sick. They didn't have enough food just to get back to town. They had enough food to go wherever they needed to go that day. They weren't left wanting, like, oh, you know what, I probably could have had another bite of fish. No, they were full. But what if five loaves would have just made everybody contempt you can eat a whole lot of bread and not be full but you eat a whole lot less meat and you can be filled up that protein that's what fills you up that's what gives you energy 
Well, what if the difference between somebody just having enough strength to get back to town out of the desert and somebody being full were them two fish? See, Jesus only asked for the bread. Man, I have no doubt Jesus could have filled them up on bread. They still had 12 baskets full left over of stuff that people didn't eat. That's why I can't go to Italian restaurants. I fill up on the bread and then the olive oil and balsamic vinegar and whatever the spices are they put in. I can eat that for days. Right? I'll fill up on bread. But that lad said, well, I've got five loaves and I've got two fish. The disciple that went and talked to him said, Jesus didn't ask about no fish, but I'm sure he can do something with it. The lad said, well, here's my bread, but here's my fish too. Right, they come back. Verse number 38. How many loaves have ye? Go and see. They didn't even know what they had. And then they come back. And when they knew, they said, five. Lord, to answer your question, there's five loaves and two fish. Jesus didn't say nothing about fish. He's in a boat teaching on the side of the water so that the people on this hillside can all see him. This is St. Jesus, by the way, that when they needed taxes, called the fish up out of the water, opened the fish up. They had the money in the fish that they needed to pay their taxes. Same one that he told Peter, you know, John, not too long ago, hey, push out into the deep, let down the net. Well, he said nets. They threw net in, and net started to break because net had so many fishes in it that it couldn't hold the fish. This is that Jesus. He's in the water already. All he's got to do is put his hand out like this, fish jump in it. Jesus had whatever he needed in order to feed these people that day. Right? He could have called in ravens to drop meat on top of their heads. Right? Like he did with Elisha or Elijah. Could send angels down with cakes like he did for Elijah. He could have done whatever he wanted to that day. But see, because of the lad and because of the disciple that came back and reported, we got them five loaves, you wanted that, but in addition to that, we also got two fish. And two fishes. That's what we're going to teach on today is what's your and? What's your and? Jesus said, how much bread you got? Go and find the bread. They came back and said, Lord, I know you're just looking for bread, but here's everything we got. We got five barley loaves. They're not much. Right? It's cheap stuff. Right? We're not, it's not wonder bread. Right? It's day old that's all, you know, on the shelf. There's the discount bread. We got to eat it quick or else it's going to go moldy. But, and we've got to, you're going to stay up. Small fishes, it says. Itty bitty things. Minnows. Sardines. Right, just enough that with the rest of that bread, that boy, the lad, right, not a grown man, a lad would have been full on this lunch. But I said, Lord, it's not much, but he can have my basket. And then the disciple says, Lord, that lad over there gave us these five loaves, but he also gave two fish. But what if the difference between ten and twelve baskets was them two fish? What if the difference between all them people being full and just being satisfied? them two fish because somebody said well the Lord asked for bread but somebody said I've got bread and the Lord asked for this but he can have this and something else why did the lad offer not just the loaves but also the fish I honestly believe that the disciples went out saying how much bread you got Jesus asked for how much bread you have Jeffrey, I believe that the lad could have gone to bed that night with a clear conscience if he only gave up them five loaves. But he said, nope, five loaves and these two fish. The disciple could have said, I don't think them fish worth anything. You keep the fish. He could have gone back and said, Lord, we got five loaves. Somebody was talking about fish. You didn't want that fish. He's saying, Lord, I know the fish that, you know, you sent us on the day that, you know, you called Peter, James, John, Andrew got them off the boat that day made them fishers men I remember how good that fish tasted you didn't want them fish right, why don't you call Nessie out of the lake over there and just feed everybody with that 
But no, he said, Lord, there's five loaves and there's these two fishes. Jesus said, all right, give it. Bring it to me. He didn't correct them. He said, I wanted the loaves, but if you're going to give me the fish, I'll do something with that fish. Y'all do realize that, we've already mentioned it, protein, that's where you get your sustenance. Not off the bread. Right? The bread goes with the meat. The bread's the delivery mechanism for what really you're craving. Is this not the bread of life? What's this? This is the delivery mechanism for you in your life to get the not sincere milk of the Word of God, but meat, as Paul said. Right, yesterday at the cookout, if y'all ate a burger, hopefully you civilized and put it on a bun. But what was the bun there for? So that you could hold on to the bun and get the burger to your mouth. What's a hot dog bun? Something to hold the hot dog so that you can load it up with whatever you want to and it all stay in one little package. Jesus said, just give me the delivery. He says, go find the bread and I'll fill, I'll fill the bread with something. He says, I'll give you what you need. But they came back and said, Lord, here's the bread and. Lord, here's the bare minimum. Really, you don't have a meal if you don't have bread. You may have a snack. Right? You may have lunch. You don't have supper if there's no bread. Right? Call our family crazy, but because of who the head of the house is, we judge restaurants based off of how good the bread is. Right, if you've got good bread, there's good food. If your bread's just, you know, oh, well, here's some, here's what we got. Stale. Right, or all they got is, you know, just like plain white bread. And the butter's not even real butter. They don't give you anything else to put on top of it. That's not bread. Christian likes sourdough bread. Right, I like any kind of bread as long as it's got good flavor. Right, we are a gluten family probably why we're all so swole up but what good is a pizza if the dough's bad but Jesus said just give me the bread I got the, but they said Lord we know you only wanted bread but here's fish too they said Lord whatever you fixing to do with that bread if you want to here's some fish that may have just been the appetizer. Right, if you like me and you eat weird stuff, right, every now and then I just get itty bitty fish as the appetizer. Or I'll get something like calamari, which is seafood, but it's just an appetizer. That's not the whole meal. That's just what my whistle. I said, Lord, while you're doing whatever you're doing with that bread over there, cooking up a feast, here's these fish if you just want to give them a little taste. What their whistle. Right, you ever had, every now and then, in the car on the way to church, right, in the middle of a rough day, you put on some preaching, some singing, what, whatever you need, just that little shot in the arm, something to what your whistle to get you back to the house of God or to get you back to your house so you can get your nose in the book. They're thinking, well, Lord, maybe just, maybe just a little bit. He said, sit back and watch what I can do. He touched it once. 5,000 were filled. 12 baskets full. What if you got 40% less food because somebody didn't offer the fish? Because that's what it is. The difference between 7 and 5, 40%. But what if, but Mike, they, you go out to lunch and somebody said, well, here's what you could have had, but I'm scraping 40% of it off. But I don't know about you, but most of the time I eat everything on the plate and I'm still a little bit hungry. Let alone if somebody tried to take 40% of it away. You try to touch food on my plate, you're liable to get an arm bit off. But what's the point? Now, don't get me wrong. We got it too good. We all eat too much. Right? I can go without 40% of a meal. I can go without a few, few meals, and y'all wouldn't even know. Right? I'd still be in the same size pants. But, when you're out in the middle of the desert. When you're out and you've gone all the way out in the middle of nowhere following after this man on a boat named Jesus. 
Some of them hadn't even seen him. They just heard about him. They wanted to see him. They had loved ones that needed Jesus to do something for them in their life. Who knows how many people had taken the lame or the blind or the halt. Trekked them all the way across the desert just hoping to meet Jesus. And then he has compassion on them and he teaches them. Preaches the greatest message that's ever been preached here on earth. Then, as he looks at him, he understands they're hungry. The disciples knew that they were hungry. He, they could hear stomachs growling. They said, Lord, send them away so that they can go eat. He said, you give them to eat. Now, I honestly believe if the disciples would have just on faith said, all right, Lord, what are we feeding them? Jesus said, go give them to eat. <coughs> First, what he said, go give them food. Jesus wasn't going to be in the equation. I honestly believe, Brother Josh, they said, all right, well, let's go find what we can give them. They started looking around for some bread, found them fish. All right, Lord, what do we do now? He said, we'll break a little bit off and give it to them. I believe the same thing would have happened. Faith, the size of a grain of seed of mustard, moved mountains. But they said, Lord, we ain't got enough to give them. They had no faith. And we notice also later on, you go and study it out, the disciples, the meaning of the miracle, the feeding of the 5,000 was lost on them because their hearts were hardened to what they were doing. They's already in a bad mood. They were supposed to be on vacation. These people ruined it. They had to sit there and listen to stuff. They had already heard the preacher preach a whole bunch. Then they got to go out and they got to go hiking through these possibly, you know, 15,000 people or more. We know there's 5,000 men there that day. Got to go hiking all around. Y'all got any bread? Y'all got any bread? Y'all got any bread? Nobody's got bread. Nobody's even got like, you know, crackers. Nobody's got anything. They're starving. Then they get back. Y'all find anything? No, 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 no. And then that last Yehu, probably John, because he's a disciple whom Jesus loved. He was the one that was always closest to the Lord. He probably went out and said, well, boys, y'all might not find nothing. I found a lad. He got five loaves. And two fish. They said, well, Jesus only wanted the bread. He said, yep. But tell Jesus he's got two fish. John said, I don't know what the Lord wanted to do with five loaves, but I know he's going to do something greater with five loaves and two fish. That lad, well, if the Lord wants the bread, what he's asking is, Jesus wants to know if anybody has any bread. The lad's saying, well, the Lord can have my appetizer. He can have the bread, but he can also have the meal, the fish. They're saying if Jesus wants bread, he can have bread and the good stuff. Yeah, it's just barley loaves. Nowadays, that'd be like going to, because of the inflation or COVID, it'd be like going to Red Lobster and instead of getting a biscuit, you get something about this big. Pop it in your mouth, one bite. Be like ordering a Red Robin burger, Brother Josh, and getting a White Castle. That's what a barley loaf was. Wasn't meant to fill you up. It was just meant to go with, to compliment. Had five of them little loaves, two little fish. Jesus said, bring it to me. Jesus could have taken that bread, done a whole lot with it. But notice what happens here. Jesus touched it, broke it give it to the disciples. Disciples just start handing it out to everybody and then at the end of it they're like well we still got more. Well go give it to them people over there. Alright. I don't know maybe some of the disciples had short legs like Zacchaeus. Some of them had long legs. Some of them covered ground. But when everybody had had some I honestly believe on person number, man number 5,000 and his family when they handed it out all right, that's all I got. Did you run? I'm out. I'm out. Well, then everybody ate, and it said they were full, so they took them baskets and collected what was left. They said, y'all full? All right. They're like, I don't have anywhere to put this. This is going to go bad if we don't eat. Well, put it in that basket. By the end of it, they had 12 baskets. I don't know, but Jesus blessed it, which meant it's going to be good as long as it needed to be good. That lad took it home. I don't know what that lad's family did, but they ate well for a while. 
Mom, I made a good uh, business transaction today. I met Jesus. <clears throat> you remember that little lunch he gave me? Well, he turned it into all this. Plus he fed 5,000 on top of it and it's full. And they say, how in the world, what, what are you talking about? He says, you don't believe, there's 12 beds. Open them up, it's got food in there. A whole bunch of bread, a whole bunch of fish. Now, I don't know. I know that that great drought of fishes that they caught. What do you think James and John and Peter and Andrew and Zebedee's family lived off of while they were following the Lord for three years? The money from all them fish. What this boy's family go through that they needed all this food? I don't know. But what if they got 40% less of it because they held back? What if one of the people in that crowd that day needed every bit of food that they could get to have the energy to get? Granted, they've walked around half of a sea. They've taken a trek. Took Jesus a few days to get there by boat, and they beat him on foot. You say, what if them people had a long way to go? At 40%, less energy wouldn't have made it. 40% may have found them where that man that we heard preached about last week, the Good Samaritan, down in that pit. Maybe 40% was that pit. But if they were full and they didn't have to stop and the rest, they could have made it all the way to town. What if 40% less found them in the midst of wolves and sheep's clothing? He said, what are you talking about, Brother Jordan? Well, there are times that the Lord says, well, here's what I expect. How many loaves you got? We all know how much, how many loaves we got. Brother Mike, we know how much we're supposed to tithe. We know that we're supposed to give something on top of it, but we've worked out a number that makes us feel good. And we throw that in as the offering. That somebody comes in town, love offering, well, here's a loaf. But we know how much loaf we got. We know how much time we're going to read, how much we're going to put. Y'all know right now, if I asked you how much you're going to read, you, either you know the number or you've got an idea. What you're going to read this week? That's your loaf. Do you know how much time you're going to spend praying this week? you know how much time you're not going to be thinking about the things of God this week because you're going to be doing a whole bunch of other stuff? you know how many loaves you have, but how many fish you got? Lad didn't hold nothing back. And the disciple, believing Jesus, just said, well, he didn't ask for fish, but I bet he can do something with the fish. I'll take the fish too. The disciple comes back. How many bread? Well, I found five loaves. But that lad had some fish too. And I could see Peter. Wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't. Could have been Thomas. Thomas Didymus. Double-hearted. Well, Jesus didn't tell us what... You'd have been back sooner if you wouldn't have been looking for fish and bread. Jesus just wanted fish. Or, I mean, just wanted bread. Didn't want no fish. They said, yeah, but we got bread and fish. Jesus said, how many of you? Lord, we got five and two fishes. They said, well, bring everything. They said, well, you didn't ask for fish. He said, no, but you brought it. We know what the Lord expects. That's our best. Why? Because he gave his best for us. But there's your best. What you've, in your mind, figured out in the math equation, well, this is what the Lord expects from me. No, the Lord expects your best. The Lord may ask for loaves, but you also may know that he can do something with them fish you got too. Right during an invitation, you may know that you need to go to the altar for you. What if the Lord wants you to pray for somebody else too? What's that? Fish on top of bread? What if the Lord just wants you to give that little bit extra? Wasn't much. Two small fish. Probably wouldn't have been that much. Really meat. meat. You ever seen a small fish? There's even less meat on a small fish. Most of the time, they got more bone than they got meat. Big fish, salmon, tons of meat. Little fish, very little meat. Tuna, tons of meat. Little fish, 
You're going to be like sucking that thing dry trying to get the meat off of it. But he said, it wasn't much, but he gave it. Lord, here's my bread, but here, here's this too. Not much. But what can God do with your hands? You say, what's that hand? I don't know. For his lad, it was two fish. For Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, he just said, Lord, I believe. Where would you have me go? And when he got there, he said, and Lord, where would you want me to go next? Lord, what else do you want me to do? Your hand may not be any more something, it just may be doing it over and over and over again. But how many times was he beat half to death and he just looked at the Lord and said, and where are we going to now? Not well, others said the Bible. Noah. I was thinking of this. I was looking at numbers this week too in the Bible. Two. I believe I can make a good case that two is the number of God's will. How many humans God make? Two. Adam and Eve. Probably because he saw that it was good that man and woman dwelt together. How many animals God sent into the ark? Two by two. Two of every kind of animal. When Jesus sent his disciples out, them 70 disciples, and lead the way, how did he send them? Two by two. How many spies came back from Canaan believing that God could do it? Two. Just two. How many God promised to be in the midst of? Two or three gathered in his name. He'd be in the midst. And will of God. Well, Noah never thought about where them animals are going to come from. God don't talk to Noah once, by the way. Gave him instructions. No, he had a really good memory or a quick hand because he wrote them down and he never lost them. And he built the ark. And as the ark's near completion, he just looked and said, All right, Lord, what's next? And what else do you need from me? He said, I got it from here. The animal just starts showing up. Then they all got in there. They weren't rowdy. They sat down, whatever they were supposed to do. God closed the door. He said, No, you gave. Everything you gave a hundred years, you preached right. You didn't just build it; you preached righteousness as you built it. That was Noah's hand. He said, "Y'all need to get in the boat. The boat's not even finished, but go ahead and get in it and help me finish it. Y'all need to get in the boat." God just told Noah build an ark. Didn't tell him to preach, witness, go out and try and win other people. But Noah said, "If he wants me to build the ark so that we could be safe, my hand." All right, Lord, I'll build it and I'll preach to them while I'm building it. Throughout the whole Bible, you're going to find where the Lord said, do this. And because people love God, because they believe God, they had faith in God, and they trusted that God could do more with what they had than what they could do with it. They just said, Lord, here's what you asked for, and here's this. This day is the difference between 10 and 12 baskets. Later on, Jesus carrying his cross up to Via Dolorosa. The road was two miles long. He said, Go the extra mile. He got to halfway there and he carried the cross the rest of the way. He didn't just bear in his bodies the affliction of our sin, as the Bible said, right? Our peace was upon him. He didn't just bear it, he also, you know, endured, he bore it to Calvary he didn't just say I'll pay for it he said I'll take it and become it and pay for it so that they don't have to be trusted with the payment he could have made the payment for sin and said alright here's your piece you got to take care of it he said no I'll take care of all of them and well what comes after the end I don't know this lad didn't know that them fish were going to be important that day until they said well where's the bread he said, I got five of those, but I also got two fish. Right? Those that have a heart to see the Lord do something, there's nothing in their life that's off limits to God. But there may be just today, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, 
maybe a month from now, a year from now. But the Lord's going to ask, say, here's what I expect. Deal with your heart maybe about doing something, but Lord, I'll do it. But here's this too. Lord, you want me to be good to somebody? Let's just be extra good to them. Lord, you want me to teach a class at the church? I'll teach it, but I'll teach it the best that I can teach it. Lord, you want me to go out on visitation? I'll do two extra houses. Why? Because the Lord deserves it. This boy just heard Jesus preach about everything that he needed for the rest of his life and all eternity. And he said, if the Lord wants the bread, he can have the fish. Really what he was saying is, if he wants the appetizer, I'll give him the meal too. He's saying, if he's just asking for the crumbs, I'll give him, I'll give him the good stuff too. Because Jesus deserves the good stuff. I wonder if that lad understood that the meal was going to be going to everybody else. I wonder if he thought that Jesus was hungry. If the Lord's hungry, he cannot just have my bread, he can have my fish. Well, if you would do it to the Lord, the Bible says do all things as unto Christ. If you'd give Jesus the fish, why wouldn't you give it to somebody else? Because you're supposed to do it to them as unto Christ. If the Lord asked you for it in person, and you'd give it, then you're responsible to give it to everyone else. All the law fulfilled in this. We taught on the teens class last week. What's that? Love God supremely. And then, love thy neighbor as thyself. You know what that means? I'm supposed to love myself as God sees me. Not as I see me. Which means I'm supposed to love me like God loves me. Because of what he's made me into. Not what I used to be, but I love what Jesus turned me into. Well, what did the Lord make me into? The image of his son. It's not finished yet, but he's still working on it. But that's how I'm robed in his righteousness so that the Lord sees his son when he sees me. Right? Well, if that's how I'm seen as God, what am I supposed to I'm supposed to love my neighbors myself. I'm supposed to love them as a child of God, even if they aren't. And as a child of God, who do I really look like? Don't look like me. I'm going to be transformed into whatever body he's got me prepared over yonder I'm going to look like the son so really I'm supposed to love them like Jesus do all things as unto Christ that's not popular preaching because we like to dislike other people we like to judge other people but see the difference may be between that person getting 60% of the way in and all the way in is your two fish we're written epistles known in red, but we're also supposed to be light. What if you shine 40% less light? You think that person's really going to get into heaven? Not their fault if you don't shine the light bright enough for them. Not your fault if you don't take 40% extra steps to go and get it, what they need, and then bring it back to them. It's not their fault if you don't give them truly whatever it is that they need we say well how do I know that you got to learn you got to ask you got to be willing to answer questions you know what all that extra work is two fish and but if you do it for Jesus why don't you do it for somebody else if you do it unto God God says do it unto other people like that so if we come in and we're saying, well, Lord, here's my bread and my fish. He don't want it in here. You know what this is around here? This, we just come and worship him. Us, we all been fed. But I know what we hear three times a week around here. We all got good food. We got good meat. Well, he wants you to take that meal and go out there to the hungry and get five loaves and two fishes. He don't want your bread... He don't want your fish in here. We're in here just to give back unto him. But why did he give you that bread and that fish to go out there and to give it to others? So you come in, you get filled up, he touches your bread. He touches your fish. And then 
Show me again where he touched it again. Now the disciples went out and they gave. Just start breaking off bread and fish. They never went back to get more from Jesus. He touched what he gave them and it was enough for everybody. So when you go out there, just start breaking off bread and fish. Say, Lord, here's everything I got. But after he touches it, go out and give it. And notice, the disciples didn't come back and just start breaking off more and filling up the oil baskets. No. They gave everything, they had, and then they collected up the scraps that were left over and got 12 baskets. What do you say? When they came back to Jesus, they were empty handed at first. You know what they found? When they gave all, there's still plenty left. And. But Lord, here's what I've been doing, but I want to do more. What's my and? Lord, I want to see you do something really special. What's the end? Lord, this is what I'm comfortable doing. Get me out of my comfort zone. What's the end? You want to know when God really starts moving? When you don't know what really is going on, you're just living on faith? What's that called? Getting outside your comfort zone. Say, Lord, give me something that I may not necessarily be comfortable with, but I want to get out in the deep water because I want to see what you can do out there. Lord, let's go a little bit deeper. What's the end? Well, here's everything I've been doing, and let's do something more. Maybe a little bit more prayer, a little bit more study. Maybe a little bit more witnessing. Maybe a little bit more fellowship with the saints. Like we heard about on Wednesday, be Barnabas. May just be a little, but by the end of it, you may find out that there's 12 baskets full left over. You know what that 12 baskets full did? Went to a family and it changed their whole life. Just a little bit here on this side can make a whole lot of difference in all eternity. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.